This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here, and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. This video is going to be focused on the maxillary second premolar. So here we have that permanent maxillary second premolar, and using the universal tooth numbering system, this is including tooth number 4 and 13. And remember, I'm using the universal numbering system here, not the Palmer notation or FDI system. So to avoid confusion, we're sticking with the universal notation system because that's what the board exam typically refers to. So this tooth has a lot of similarities to the maxillary first premolar. So like we did with the mandibular central versus the mandibular lateral incisor, we're going to focus mostly on the differences between this tooth and the maxillary first premolar. So for the facial aspect, the facial cusp is more blunted than it was in the first premolar. So those cusps are generally getting less and less sharp as we go posteriorly from the canine to the first premolar, then the second premolar is a little more blunted, and then as we'll see with the molars, they become even more blunted. Also, this cervical line here is a bit flatter than we saw with the first premolar. There's also a smaller or absent mesial concavity, which is vastly different than the first premolar, where we saw that big concavity right at the CEJ area. Here, that mesial surface is relatively flat, has a flat outline. Now for a similarity, that mesial cusp bridge is perhaps slightly longer than the distal cusp bridge, which again is the same as we saw with the first premolar. Now for the lingual aspect, first off, there's not as much lingual taper or convergence toward the lingual aspect that we're used to seeing from basically all the other teeth that we've seen up to this point. That lingual surface is just about as blocky as the facial surface was. Another distinction is that the lingual cusp is now taller than it was in the first premolar. In fact, it's almost as long as the facial cusp now. However, it is still angled toward the mesial. From the side view, you can appreciate that the cusps are now closer to the same height. There's not that one millimeter difference that we saw with the first premolar. And again, there's no mesial concavity here, so that crown and root are just super flat. There's not a whole lot to talk about there. There's also not this prominent mesial marginal ridge groove that we saw with the first premolar, maybe just a little tiny groove there. So this mesial surface in general is just much more boring, which isn't a bad thing if you're trying to study and remember all of these facts. And lastly, there's usually just one root rather than two, so there's no bifurcation to worry about. So if you've been watching from the start of this series, you've already memorized the universal traits of the distal aspect that flatter cervical line that you're used to seeing. Usually the distal root flute is deeper than it was on the mesial surface. But now I'm going to add a new thing, so get ready. As you go distally, teeth will get shorter and shorter. And this phenomenon even happens within the same tooth. So this manifests as the distal part of the crown being shorter than the mesial part of the crown. In other words, the distal marginal ridge is shorter than the mesial marginal ridge. So you actually get to see a bunch of the occlusal surface from this view because of that. If we compare that to the mesial aspect, you'll see a lot less of the occlusal surface from this view because that mesial marginal ridge is higher or taller. The number one distinguishing feature from this occlusal view compared to the first premolar is that the central groove is shorter, which makes the marginal ridges look much thicker. We could say that one third of the crown is composed of one marginal ridge, one third of the crown is composed of the central groove area, and then the other third of the crown, the other marginal ridge. 
The groove is also more centrally located. You may recall with the first premolar, its central groove was a little bit more lingual and was kind of a smile shaped. This one is dead straight smack dab in the middle of the tooth. The occlusal surface is also more, let's say, wrinkled, and that's due to the additional secondary anatomy and supplemental grooves. Next, let's talk about the pulp. So for the first part of this slide, it's the exact same as the last video. We had two cusps, so we expect two pulp horns. That's pretty typical. The second part is different though. 75% of maxillary second premolars have one canal because there's usually just one root, while 25% have two. An easy way to remember this is the majority of first premolars have two canals, while the majority of maxillary second premolars typically only have one canal. So the one and the two are opposite of each other. Although the crown was hexagonal from the occlusal view, and I would say more of a rounded hexagon for this premolar, if we cut the tooth in cross section at the middle of its root, we would simply see an oval shape. So a summary of the maxillary second premolar, the facial lingual dimension is slightly larger than the occluso cervical dimension. They were very close with the maxillary first premolar, but here that facial lingual dimension is a bit bigger. And then finally the mesiodistal dimension is the smallest. That short central groove is probably its most prominent defining feature. It's pentagonal from the facial view, trapezoidal from the side view, hexagonal from the occlusal view, has an oval cross section, and primarily consists of four lobes, two pulp horns, and one pulp canal. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.